Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Q&A stage. Um, I hope you are all ready with your questions. This is the live Q&A. You will see our volunteers who will be going around with microphones. If you have any questions, start thinking of them now. And I'd like you to please put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, Damon Waynes Jr. and Chris Jones. Check, 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 check. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. So we're going to just do a quick introduction. Guys, could you just tell us a little bit about the special guest app? So you could start it off, man. Yeah, no, you, you got it. Uh, special guest is a entertainment platform. We make it easier for talented people to get discovered and to get booked. But our real North Star is just developing tools and services to help talented people make more money. Yep. Saying everybody wants to make more money. That's just the best way. Especially if you're, you know, if you're I mean, not not this much money, but money. But for sure, money, like actual money. I mean, not, not, you know, my. Kind. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. No, but that's literally what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a platform that made it easy for uh, people who entertain to make money doing what they love. So they don't have to shelve their dreams. And they can actually pursue it and be rewarded for it. There's so many talented people out there. Absolutely. Um, and so tell us a little bit about uh, the last couple of years, obviously, has had a huge effect on entertainment worldwide. What has COVID and the pandemic been like for, for your business? I mean, it shut us down, practically. I mean, we're, basically, yeah. Yeah, we're fortunate enough to be venture backed, so we didn't technically shut down. In fact, we doubled and tripled down, uh, which I'll get to in a second. But like live entertainment, froze, as we all know. And so the people that we were serving were out of work. So what we doubled and tripled down on, which we just talked about on the main stage, is a refocus on talent as a priority over the talent buyer and developing tools, like I said, to help them make more money. So just now from the stage, we launched merchbooth.com, which I hope you guys like my t-shirt. I'm, I'm usually not a walking billboard, uh, but today I am. Uh, Merchbooth.com, like one of the areas that professional entertainers that have management where they make their money uh, is in merch. I mean, it's just a very lucrative way to engage your fans, give them what they want. And um, so it's, a great, it's yeah. a great reward for, you know, after you see somebody that you really liked, you're like, I want something to remember this moment merchandise. You know what I mean? A lot of people do it. I've done it. I go to the Kanye concerts. I'm taking some of his crazy stuff, you know? Yeah, and there's yeah. like, it's like guilt trip too. So we're like yeah. really trying to feed off like families. So when <laughs> the kids say, I like that shirt, mommy. <laughs> no, really, it's about designing really cool stuff that people want to wear. And, 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 and it's like worthy even beyond your love for the entertainer. It's just like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, so merch booth dot com check it out absolutely go see what they got there okay so we're going to take a couple of questions from the audience um, let me see where are my volunteers at we've got some people in the front row here and thank you everyone for coming this is a great crowd here I yeah, appreciate oh. you guys hi um, so I was just curious in terms of because you guys are working directly with the talent how do you guys ensure I guess that they're not guaranteed work, but how do you kind of keep them happy and keep them sort of involved in your service and sort of giving them opportunities, let's say, if they can't find any? How do you kind of turn that around and sort of keep them happy and, and working with you guys? Well, I, I mean, I think we definitely try to accommodate uh, talent to the best of our, of our abilities, but it's a two-way street. It's also like, how bad as an entertainer do you want it? You know, because we'll match that, you know. So that's, I, I feel like that's the best. Yeah, I mean, you can't take the hustle out of getting discovered. Uh, we could build technology to help, but at the end of the day, if you, if you stop hustling, you, you, you really reduce the odds of success. We have a talent um, rep team. So, yes, they're leveraging the technology, but people could call one eight seven seven eight one talent and actually get advice on how to rank higher on our platform. Um, 
you know, what could I do better? What am I doing wrong? There's, there's some nuances about, in a positive way, about how you present yourself that helps you get discovered. I was talking on the main stage about the quality of the, the content that you're putting in front of a buyer. If you know, a bride is looking to book someone for her wedding, um, this is a big deal. Like, most of us could relate to that moment or no, like that's a huge deal. I remember when I got married, my wife's like, we're totally booking the New York Times band. I, I didn't even know who they were. Um, they were pretty expensive. I do know that, but no. So uh, it's, it's really about coaching and that. And so anybody could really call us. And I think what you'll find is people on the other side that have a lot of experience that really simulate the role of a, of a talent manager or a talent rep. Okay, very good. Um, and we Did we answer it? Oh, okay, great. Great. Are, are you an entertainer, by the way, or no? TV movies. Um, oh. So Hallmark, the W Network, all those cheesy rom-coms you watch. Gotta love them. Um, yeah, so... We're um, looking for friends, so... <laughs> absolutely. You well, like that's a, why I was eager to come here and see, um, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at, um, you know, your company as well and seeing if that's something we can work with down the line and finding new talent and things like that. Um, and I was just curious to see, you know, how you can kind of not make that promise, but keep those people involved and, and, and maintain that. And, and it's really true what you said about matching that, you know, if you're going to bring that hustle, then we're going to match it. And I, I, I appreciate that. So thank you. I'm Sharon from Hi, Toronto. Sharon. Do I look familiar? Did I? It was last time. You were here last, last time, time, right? Last time. I yeah, did. I yeah. did. I jumped up on the stage and you gave me props on my hair. Different hair. Oh. Um, live streaming. I'm a bit fan of live streaming, as you know, streaming you right now. Say hi to the folks. Hi, and, folks. And um, we saw some of the popularity with verses um, and people trying to do live and sometimes pre-recording it and sharing it as live. Is that an approach that you um, have explored or taken a look at for, you know, hopefully this pandemic is over, but if we are in a situation to use that technology um, with the artists and the clients? Do you know what uh, verses is? Versus, it's this thing where they will take like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. two different yeah. entertainers and yeah. So she's basically you're asking us if we would ever utilize something like that. Um, I mean, hopefully we don't have to go through the pandemic again. But I, I definitely think it behooves us to explore as many, you know, alternate um, ways of entertainment like streaming, uh, of course. So yeah, for sure, I think we would we would incorporate that or at least look into it. Yeah, I think one of the points he makes, he's a stand-up comic, and there's nothing like that live entertainment experience. Like, yeah. we're here. I mean, if, if I was talented, maybe I would try to perform, but it would really, like, we have the ability to, we have all of your attention. The internet... You've got and, some moves, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the internet and, like, social media, there's tons and tons of this, and honestly, I think that most people want it in bite sizes of, like, 10 seconds. So it's this. Whereas, again, Damon and I are here, we have the stage, we have your attention. This is a live, intimate experience. Many of you won't forget this moment, especially if you're a fan of me. No, of kidding, <laughs> of Damon. And so there's something that I think Damon and I share, which is, yes, he's a live entertainer, but many of us love live entertainment, and you can't replicate that. So kudos to social media, and the web and stuff, but when the pandemic hit, we, we were really quick to launch um, uh, like Zoom entertainment. But the, the, the thing was, within weeks, all the entertainers were just performing for free. Uh, and so it, it really made it difficult for us to help them monetize that. That's a whole nother you know, can of worms, and I, and I wish it didn't play out that way. But I really think for live performers, now you could become famous through social media, don't get me wrong. You could engage with your followers through social media. But if you want to electrify them, they need to be in the room watching you perform. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's what you said. It's, it's more of an experience than anything, right? So it's that, that moment. And also a lot of people who are, I'm not taking anything away from people who are, are utilizing those platforms like Instagram and TikTok to become famous, to show their talents. It's a whole other ball game doing it live. It's totally different. I've seen 
a lot of my, I have a lot of buddies who are Instagram famous, and they go and do stand up with me, and they have a hard go. You know, it's it's an it's an art form, and people, when you are there and you see it and it's working, you appreciate it. And so it's like he said, you'll never, you don't forget things like that. So I I always prefer uh, live entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much, Damon Wayans Jr., for creating that app, supporting creatives. You're awesome. Uh, you're awesome. <laughs> and we'll see you next year. <laughs> Thank you very much. So just a quick a question on, on entertainers. So obviously you have comedians, you have um, actors, you have bands, musicians. What are the kind of entertainers are you working with? One of the more popular ones that I, we didn't mention as much uh, are impersonators. So last year... This isn't actually Anybody want to try to guess this? Last year, who do you think was the most popular entertainer? Uh, impersonator. Impersonator, yeah. To book on special guest. Free Britney? Free Britney? Britney Spears. Right? This year, I, and I'll just cut to the chase. Amber Heard. No. <laughs> we have not had one. Um, <laughs> but we had... <gasps> When I tell you that we've had hundreds and hundreds of Johnny Depp um, and Tom Cruise impersonators uh, requests, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, so to your question, impersonators are one of those interesting ones. And then we have wow. like a lot of America's Got Talent finalists on the, on the platform. So as crazy as like sword swallowers and contortionists. Um, magicians? Oh, 100% magicians. Of, like magician me? is one of our strongest categories. Yeah. And we have a lot of corporate magicians, so the ones that you could book for your corporate event, and they have you know an hour and a half of material, and they're interactive and stuff like that. The scary ones, the ones where you're like, is that magic, like yeah. actual, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> okay, we'll go with some more questions. We're gonna try some people at the back. Anyone at the back got some questions? Yeah, just over here. Just a quick question. I know you focus on live entertainment, but do you have any plans to tie in the entertainment with the metaverse or other virtual forms? Ooh, I mean, it's interesting. The metaverse is kind of scary, but I like it. I don't know. I, that'd be that'd be cool. They've okay. done things like that. That's like they've done like like Fortnite does that sometimes. They had like that uh, that Travis Scott. Um, that was pretty. That was awesome. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think? It's a, it's a smart question. Um, just yesterday, Zuckerberg made some. Uh, you know, posted on Facebook about how eye contact in the metaverse is in, like emotion, potentially emotional. Like you could feel the connection in the metaverse more than you can in the non-metaverse or through whatever other means, like social media, I guess. And so possibly, you know, um, or there will be a startup that beats us to it. Uh, but it's, it's really a provocative question. We're definitely paying attention, for sure. And that might be the answer to, to the virtual experience of live entertainment, to make it a more memorable, more intimate, more sort of like I was there type of experience. Yeah, good question. OK, so uh, we'll go over this side here. Just over there, the second row. Yep. How do you um, vet your talent that comes through the app? How do you vet your how do you vet? How do you vet it? Yeah. We get that all the time, and the, and the right answer is we let technology do it for us. Um, I'm not going to share our exact algorithm, but one of them is profile views. You know, another is the here I go telling the algorithm. <laughs> do it, There's man. others. Write There's it down. Ratings and reviews won't hurt. Why? Social proof. So we would rather empower through technology the buyer to make their decisions. In the same way that when we watch America's Got Talent, we all agree, like, oh, they weren't really that good. Why did they just push them through? So it's, it's a subjective type of thing. And so technology could come in and give you confidence in the same way that when you buy something on eBay or you buy something on Etsy, you, you probably aren't going to buy anything that has zero uh, people before you who've, who've purchased it. That's the right answer, but there's nuances to it and they're, you know, we actually have, and this is just the truth, I mean, we've been in business for about four years or so, almost-ish. And, um, no, it's probably four years at least. And um, 
I'm telling you, 99.x percent of the time, the feedback that we get on that experience was, wow, you guys really streamlined the experience for me. I did it with confidence. And one other thing is, because of COVID, we did this, but we actually have an unconditional money back guarantee. So book Damon through the app. We which, don't like it. Which will cost you. No, no. And then, and then just reach out and say, Chris said it was free <laughs> because unconditional money back guarantee. That's a dangerous one. Uh, we'll take some questions just here in the front. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sophie. I'm actually also a founder of a company called Lisa. And I was wondering whether you've considered giving the artists uh, live stream shopping capabilities. So not to do their performances live through live streams, but potentially after performances to do a little session, to drop their merch, or maybe even to auction off their services for live audiences. Yes, we're making so many friends here because I've seen more of that. I'm a, my background is I'm a technology guy. I'm not an entertainer. Um, and I'm following all these things, you know, and, and I've seen lots more opportunities to engage. I actually was confused recently where I was looking at an image and I see all these hot spots on it. I'm like, is this image broken or whatever? And then before you knew it, I just bought the shirt and that was it. So we're open to those kind of things. There is, because you know, Damon grew up in the entertainment industry. He's a live entertainer. We have a throwback vibe to what we're trying to do here. It's, it's yes, we're trying to use technology, but we want this experience for people. I think there's a, a total trend in intimate, memorable experiences. I, we book bar gigs every day all over, um, and that's cool, and, and the artists are making money in this kind of thing. But honestly, my preference would be like kill the, the, the background noise. You know, I know you're there to drink and to eat, but I want our performers to really have the stage. And again, we don't, that's not, that's my own opinion. It's not like a company position, but yeah. I'm re we're really about the throwback live entertainment experience. Definitely. And it's, <laughs> it's actually kind of disappointing that we have to call it throwback, you know, because we all still do it. You know I mean? No matter how techy we get, we still want to go to a, a concert or, you know, see somebody like get shot out of a cannon. It's fun. Like they might die. You know what I mean? Like, like we like that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that, I think that no matter what, no matter how advanced technology gets, live performances will always persevere because human, human beings are just like, we like to see each other. We like, you know, physical contact. We like to experience each other. Uh, live and um, and be entertained. So yeah, but definitely keep, keep it PG on the physical contact thing. Yeah, P I didn't mean it like. I mean, we like that too. You know what I mean? Like that's how we make other people. You know what I mean? It's to come to our shows. You know. I was watching because uh, we just got here last night, and I was watching some of the stream earlier in the week, and there was a. Uh, I think he was a TikTok star on the stage, and I was just watching it. You guys do know, right, when we consume this content, it's not first take, right? Do you know that there are filters? Do you know that there are edits? I've been to his stand-up many times, and he can't be like, uh, give me a couple minutes, I gotta go and rehearse a little bit more. Like, it's like showtime, he's got the stage, they're there to see the guy from New Girl or from whatever, and he has to perform. Totally different experience. Nothing wrong with the 100 edits, it's all cool, you know, but we're, we're trying to do something else. Yeah, and by no means am I crapping on TikTok because I learn a lot of really cool stuff on TikTok. So, like, it's flat earth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, but, yeah, no, so... We have different they feeds. All, they all, you know, they all... Every, everything... All entertainment is good, but I would love to keep... Uh, live entertainment going, you know, and I would love to keep because there's so many people out there that don't get represented. They don't get these opportunities. So we're trying to make that happen. We're trying to, you know, also get them you know, build an infrastructure around them so that they can be more self-sufficient. So they're not just an entertainer. They're an entertainer and they can sell, you know, their their um, their merchandise and stuff like that. That's I think that's really cool, you know. Absolutely, that's great. So um, you're back 
on the road, you're back performing live, you're doing your comedy. Is there anything else you're working on at the moment that you can tell us about? Um, I might be doing something with uh, my daddy. Uh, we might be acting something together. Um, and then i um, supposed to be shooting a movie later on this year. And I just wrote a script that I'm adapting into a graphic novel because I draw too. I'm a busy boy. I'm trying to. I'm going to be shooting my special either at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. Uh, my stand-up special. So look out for that too. Great. And good. then special guest, baby. Of course. Merchbooth.com. Um, we're going to go back to some more audience questions. Anyone at the back who hasn't had a chance yet? Uh, just over here. Yeah. I'm going to break the rules and go a bit off piste with a question. Break it. <laughs> break them. Okay. So. Uh, I want to know uh, which one of your dad's movies is your favorite, and I want to know why there hasn't been a White Chicks 2. <laughs> um, my favorite dad movie, I th think, has to be Major Joe Pain, Pain, probably. Be well, one, because that was the only movie that I was actually... like. I, we, he shot that in Virginia, and so we... The whole family went and like we lived in Virginia for like three months. So I used to be able to go to the set and like experience that. That was my first time like seeing how a movie was made. So that's my favorite one um, for him. And then <laughs> White Chicks too. They've talked about it a lot. Um, you know, my uncle Sean almost quit White Chicks one because the makeup because they they had to put it took like hours to put makeup on every day and then you know hours to take it off too so they were like literally kind of wasting away like you, they had to be slim so they could fit in the ladies clothing and so yeah they almost they almost pulled the plug on white chicks one so i don't know i would like to see him get his little belly inside of the uh, <laughs> a little white chicks two outfit could be white chicks the next generation oh it could be it also could be you know i could be like a third white chick that'd be cool yeah Okay, we're going to go over this side. Anyone over here? Someone in the middle there in the front row. Hi. I um, just want to thank you for why my wife and kids show. We grew up with that in my household, oh, and awesome. it, was, it was fantastic. It was definitely ahead of its time, too. Um, I just, for my question, I wanted you to walk us through the exact process an artist goes through to be onboarded onto your platform, and for our side, what we do to get the artist at our venue or whatever. Simple. Uh, you go to specialguestapp.com, you click sign up. We want you to create a talent profile, right? That profile is gonna be what others see to book you. It's also how they discover you, if any, we have any SEOs or search engine optimizers in the room. Um, but once you complete that process, uh, it gets submitted for review and then you're available, you're for hire. You put your rate in, you upload videos, you upload uh, images, this kind of thing. And then on the demand side, uh, there's a whole host of different ways from partnerships. We book venues across the country uh, that we just have existing partnerships with because it's easier, it's more streamlined and more efficient to work with special guests than it is to hire a local you know, talent manager and or um, you know, have your wait staff do it. Um, but in addition to that, like I said, SEO, uh, we spend a lot of effort on as well as you know, paid tactics and stuff like that. And so that's on the demand side. But just it, to summarize that, we make it easier for talent to get discovered and for people to find them. Does that, does that suffice? Okay. Okay, very good. A couple more questions just right here in the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just... No, I was just going to ask, um, through the launch of this, like, were there any challenges or setbacks that you guys had to overcome in order to get the app to where it's at today and that you can talk about at least? I mean, there's always setbacks. Um, not necessarily setbacks either. It's just part of the process. You know, you just, you go, you have a meeting with people that, you know, you want to invest and they seem like they like it. Ultimately, they, they pass, it's not for them. I had to do that a couple of times, but that's just part of, you know, everybody who's, you know, put together any type of app knows that that's just part of the process. So I don't really feel like that. I feel like the only challenge, honestly, was the pandemic because, you know, now we're singing again. So, you know, I really like that. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, I, I agree with Damon. Yeah. Um, I mean, as an entrepreneur, the, I just posted on social media like two days ago, like 
the myth is that somehow you come up with an idea and then you become a gazillionaire. So I wish I wish that was <laughs> the case. So we're entrepreneurs, right? As it relates to special guests, and there's been setbacks all the time. I can't even believe that everything here went off. Like I was on the tarmac yesterday, last night, and I'm thinking he's flying in from LA. He's probably not going to end up, but we made it. So every day, we could answer this question differently for you. But the pandemic, for all of us, but for those of us in the entertainment industry, it was shut down. You know, all of the closures of bars, restaurants, stages made it impossible for us to help talent. We were lucky. We were venture backed. You know, Damon and I are both fortunately able to support the company um, where others wouldn't have. I would say, honestly, eight, nine out of 10 companies that if they were us, maybe wouldn't have survived it. We came out of it stronger. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're on the, our, the collision stage for our third time. I mean, the fact that they will keep inviting us back. I mean, I, I love these guys. I mean, these, the coordinators of this event are just phenomenal. But we're, we're back. But you never know. You know, we're just, we're just at it, you know. And uh, it's a great question, though. Resilience and resolve are required for success, especially in Look business. at this guy. Look yeah. at this guy with the quotes. That wasn't mine, so don't quote me. Oh, it wasn't? Damn. <laughs> it probably That's was. It's pretty fire. Sometimes I say something, and I'm like... <laughs> I've probably read it. It's going to be on a t-shirt. Damon just said it 10 sale. minutes ago. <laughs> no, don't, no, no. You could get that at merchbooth.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Good so question, we have, though, bro. We have time for probably mm, uh, maybe two, three more questions. I feel uh, like just he's over raising, there. Oh, sorry. No, she's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, thank you as well for being here. Oh, um, I do want to say that I totally agree. Live performance is something that was missed during the pandemic. So I'm happy that you guys still want to keep it alive. Um, but I also want to go off topic. I didn't know that was allowed, so <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question. But what was your favorite coach moment from New Girl? If you can remember. I know it's been a few years. My favorite coach moment. Um, you said what? Um, damn. That was like the most fun shooting. Uh, I would say there was this one where I was like cussing kids out. That was pretty fun. And I was I was like venting about my girlfriend, and I was I was in a classroom and I had like a green outfit on. I feel like I remember I remember just like saying the most insane things. A lot of it didn't make the cut, but it was it was like a really fun vibe. You know what I mean? It was like after every take, the whole you know the crew would like be dying laughing, everybody would dying laughing. So it was any time where the whole crew would laugh. And the actors would like make them break. It was that that was fun. I had fun every day though. It was just yeah, yeah. It was so much fun. I'm still buddies with everybody. I went to high school with Zoe, so I've known her since we were kids. Yeah. The just some new girl sort of knowledge. Lamorne Morris uh, and Jake Johnson are both investors of special guests. Yeah, they came in right, you know, from the start. And uh, they've but been they're going to have to come on stage. What was your favorite? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Behind. Yes. Okay. That was my favorite. Yeah. That was my favorite one. Okay. Yes. That was my favorite. Yeah. Oh, oh you hold it. Okay. Sorry. Uh, quick question. Uh, I, I work for a preference. Uh, for a venture capital Say it. fund. Quick question for Chris, yeah, yes. right? Yeah, for, yes. for, both, for both of you. What's your revenue model and what's your exit strategy? So um, the revenue model is to um, leverage our technology platform to make talent money and add a percentage on top of that that the buyer pays. Um, in terms of the exit strategy, um, you know, I've been at this for 24 years. I sold my first company to eBay in 2009. Um, I've had a number of ex exits. It's when you could achieve product market fit and get enough scale that the right partner calls. That happened to me with my first company, Pepper Jam. The guy's name was Michael Rubin. For those of you that don't know, he was also behind Fanatics and GSI Commerce, et cetera. You just know, like, whoa, like we could go from so, you know, we're, we're, we're in the figure it out stage still, like the, the pandemic was super disruptive and, you know, we'll know when that time is right 
to raise more capital. Fortunately, we're good right now. Um, but we'll raise more capital, refine the business model. People ask me all the time as an entrepreneur, what do you charge? And the answer is whatever your customers are willing to pay you. There's really no, it's not really an objective thing because it's a moving target. So. Okay. All right, so last question, um, just right there. Uh, g'day, uh, name's Andrew. But I have a question, just what do you think in terms of next steps from an expansion perspective, from a market segmentation? Like, can this thing go global? You know, is it something that can grow into more international markets, or is it something where you're just focusing on, you know, US and Canada for argument's sake? I mean, you know, the, the goal, was always to make it global, um, but we definitely have to fine tune the infrastructure here and in the states first before we, you know, expand. Um, you know, so we want to make sure it's working fully here, uh, it, which it is. But we just want to expand as much within the states as possible before we we go global, baby. Yeah, and we would potentially acquire or partner to go global faster. You know, I think we're, we're in kind of a rough patch right now in the economy, uh, you know, and it's, it's kind of one of those things you have to time it right to do an acquisition or something like that, but, you know, that's certainly possible. You had your, your hand up there a while, and you seemed really excited to ask a question. I was going off script again, but I wanted to say I think there is a lot of untapped talent in subway stations with buskers, and they probably don't know much about the app, so I think it'll be a really great series just introducing some buskers to that. Another friend. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to wrap up, but just in keeping with the, the memorable quotes, have you guys got any words of wisdom to, to share with possible entertainers or entrepreneurs here in the audience? Um, I don't. <laughs> that, no, I mean, I, you can't tell. I look out at this crowd. You guys have great energy, by the way. Not Everybody's only great energy, been really you guys engaged. seem like super smart, too. Like, you yeah. guys know what the hell you're talking yeah. about. This is a I good crowd. That. Is this yeah. what it feels like when you go up on stage? You're like, you could say anything. They're going to, this guy just keeps, I, he's, I could see him behind his mask. He's bright smile. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh... My, and I can't tell if you guys are interested in, of course you're interested in Damon and this kind of thing. Entrepreneurship's tough. Um, you know, it's a lot about personal and professional development. So your ability to focus in on that and just acquire more skills, you know, ha, you know ra constantly raise your standards and expectations of what's possible. I won't get into this, but I, I grew up poor, you know, left-hand side of a double block, you know, this, Entrepreneurship is really uh, uh, a gift for, for anyone who wants to try to do something that's off the beaten path to this gentleman's question here is super difficult, but is so, so rewarding. I get to work with influencers like Damon and others, and uh, it's an awesome thing. So everybody, thanks for being here. Um, you know, make sure to engage with us, try to connect with us on social media. To the Collision people, you guys rock. You guys are amazing, and uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you very much for everyone for being here, and thank you very much to our guests here. Thank you guys.